Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with some Linux in the news. Although this is not strictly Linux, but it is extremely good news for Linux users. And that's the news that you've probably heard about already, unless you've been living under a rock for the past few days. And that's the fact that Adobe will kill Flash by the year 2020. So no more updates, support, tears, or pain. Yes, <laughs> and it was quite a bit of pain. So Adobe has officially set a kill date for its beleaguered Flash. The Photoshop giant said today it plans to end support for the hacker-prone multimedia browser plugin by the end of 2020. So it means no more updates for Flash Player after that date and the end of support on many browsers, including Chrome, Internet Exploder, Edge, and Firefox. So programmers, designers, and companies whose websites still rely on Flash, and Google is saying that that's about 17% of all sites, and a lot of that is, well, advertising, really, frankly. Uh, a few others as well. Uh, they're being encouraged to start planning now to transition to a more modern format such as HTML5 or WebGL. And this is also very, very welcome news for security professionals and administrators because it's one less attack vector to worry about. So Flash Player, notoriously insecure, and it has emerged in recent years as the favorite target for automated exploit kits due to both its prevalence and the large number of serious flaws lingering in the code. So in the meantime, however, it will be at least another three plus years of dutifully patching Flash Player every month and advising users to either disable or to at least make Flash content click to play in their browser settings. In other words, don't have the Flash enabled automatically is what he's saying here, okay? Now, there are a few people who are not happy about Adobe killing off Flash. Most people are very, very happy about it, but there's still just a few people who aren't, and mainly it's going to be the Flash game developers and some people in the sciences. And uh, the rest of this article that I took this from, it, uh, it tells about how people in, you know, like, the sciences and academia or wherever, they were using Flash to create these little interactive uh, survey things that they can put on websites, you know, have people respond to them. Well, you know, now they're going to have to find another way to do it. And also, you know, there are a lot of uh, game developers still, or well, at least some game developers, I guess. I'm not really a gamer, you know, so <laughs> I don't know too much about that. But apparently some game developers still using Flash as well. Well, you know, they're all now going to need to move to a newer technology. I mean, after all, you know, the people who were manufacturing buggy whips had to move into a different profession when the horseless carriage came along and put horse-drawn carriages out of business, okay? So it's the same deal here, right? You got to go with the times. So with the exception of just these few people, the death of Flash is great news. Now, before I move on and expand on this a little bit more, I, I do want to... to uh, emphasize that I'm not really, you know, saying that Flash has been all bad, because back in the early days of the World Wide Web, everything was static. There's no such thing as interactive web pages. I mean, you just go and uh, pull up a website, it would be all in static HTML, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot that you could do with it, right? Well, the Flash is what has enabled the interactive web and is also what uh, enabled, or the, the first technology, I should say, that enabled the streaming video experience. Because prior to Flash, the only way you could watch a movie on the internet was to download it to your computer first. So if you want to watch a movie, hey, click on it, download it, maybe a couple hours, Later, you'd come back, and the movie would be downloaded. You could watch it, right? 
Well, Flash changed that. It was the, the first technology that changed that so that you could click on a video link and watch the video online. So yeah, Flash did a lot of good things. It, it did a lot of good things for us. But unfortunately, as time went on, the security problems developed, lots of security flaws. People figured out how to hack into it, how to use it to take over your computer. Uh, well, okay, maybe it's a little bit extreme, but to at least, uh, you know, use it to, you know, do different types of browser-based attacks against your computer, you know, to steal your information or whatever else, right? So, uh, because of that, the death of Flash is great news. But, it's especially great news for Linux users. So why is that? Flash on Linux has always been a bit of a bugaboo. Now, at first, the problem was getting Flash installed on Linux machines. It wasn't a simple process like it was on Windows or Mac, okay? Getting Flash installed on Linux machines it was a bit difficult. It was a bit tricky, a bit of a pain. And, uh, but, you know, you, it, it's one of those things you could eventually get done, you know, if you spend enough time trying to figure it out. So, uh, and it wasn't just Flash. It was multimedia in general. And the reason for that, it, was, it wasn't really anything technical. It was basic uh, philosophy and legalities. So, Flash is not a free open source product. So, you have your Linux distributions. A lot of them have their philosophy as their philosophy to not include anything that's not free. Okay? And I'm talking about free as in freedom, not as, you know, as in free of cost. Because Flash, I mean, the Flash plugin has always been free of cost, but it's not free as in freedom. So, you're distributions did not want to include it. And then so far as the other multimedia codecs go, like uh, the codecs required for playing your MP3 audio files or your MP4 video files uh, or whatever else, and a, you know, a few others as well. Uh, well, even the codecs to, to uh, be able to look at JPEG files. I mean, all of those were encumbered by patents. Now, those patents have since started to expire, but back at the time, they were all encumbered by patents. And so in a lot of countries, it was illegal for the Linux distributors to be able to include those codecs in with their distros in certain countries, you know, unless they paid royalties to the patent holders. Well, that's not really workable when you're talking about a free free of charge operating system. So, most of the distros then, uh, well, actually all the distros just left all that stuff out and it was up to you, you know, to uh, the user, you know, to get all the stuff installed. So, that changed though when Linux Mint came out. Linux Mint was the first Linux distro that said, hey, we're just going to include all this stuff. All right. And uh, to deal with the legalities of it, you know, they offered two different versions. They had one version that did not have all of the patent encumbered multimedia stuff. And uh, that was for countries where the patents were legal and where it was illegal to include the stuff. And then they had another version which did include all the stuff. And they said, okay, this is going to be for all the countries where this software is legal. But, you know, they didn't put any restrictions on who could download it, okay? There were no geographical uh, firewalls or anything like that on their download sites to restrict people in the countries where the patents were legal from being able to download the stuff, okay? So they just said, just look, it's up to you, your responsibility. If it's legal in your country, download it. If it's not legal in your country, then download the one without the multimedia stuff, okay? But, you know, as you can imagine, probably very, very few people downloaded the one without the multimedia stuff. 
So they had all the stuff built in already. All you had to do was install the distro. All the stuff was there already. It was great, okay? And that was one of the reasons why Linux Mint became the number one Linux distro. And actually, it still is the number one Linux distro. And then the other Linux distros, you know, they dealt with the, the codec problems, the multimedia problems in other ways. And, uh, you know, some of them, like Fedora, for example, it's a simple matter of installing a, a third-party repository and installing your stuff from there. And uh, like Ubuntu, you go to install it, there's a little thing you click on saying, okay, do you want the multimedia stuff? Okay, click here, right? Made it very easy. So now it's, it's easy for pretty much everybody to install multimedia stuff in their Linux distros. But then other problems, other Flash-related problems develop for Linux users. And the main one was in the realm of digital rights management. Yes, that's right, the dreaded DRM that is not built into the Linux version of Flash. All right? Now, uh, the reason it's not is because several years ago, Adobe announced, okay, we'll continue development of Flash for Windows and Mac, but the only thing we're going to do with Linux is just to release security updates for the Linux version of Flash, all right? So the Linux version of Flash fell way behind the Windows and Mac versions of it, right? So the Linux version now does not have all the stuff that are all the features that the Windows and Mac versions have. Now, they, Adobe has since then, it, I think it was last year, they said, okay, we'll go ahead and uh, catch the Linux version of Flash up to the Windows and Mac versions uh, as far as version numbers go. But yeah, they still said, no, we're still not going to build all the features into it that the Mac and Windows versions have. All right, so the digital rights management then is uh, a big bugaboo. I mean, I fully understand why content creators want it. It's because, you know, they don't want their stuff pirated, okay? You know, I'm a content creator myself, so I, I get that, right? But the problem with DRM, of course, is that it does make it really, really inconvenient for honest users to be able to use their stuff legally, right? So, like, if you buy, like, a program with digital rights management built into it, yeah, you can install it on one computer, but if you go to install it on another, another computer, even though it's your own computer, and you're not going to be running both computers at the same time, it's going to tell you, no, you can't do it, okay? you got to buy another copy, right? So, yeah, it is very, very uh, controversial, Uh in that, in that regard. But one of the sites that uses digital rights management is Hulu.com. So they use Flash with the digital rights management features built into it. So that means that if you have a Windows computer or a Mac computer, you can go to Hulu.com and watch your movies, watch your television shows, uh, whatever else, right? But if you have a Linux machine with the Linux version of Flash, uh, it's not going to work. It's just going to tell you, look, you got to have the DRM, okay? You got to have the DRM enabled Flash player. And I'm sure that Hulu is not the only one like that. Now, uh, the Flash, for the most part, with Linux, it, it works well. Like, yeah, you you go to your uh, favorite news website or whatever, you've got all these Flash advertising come up. Okay, no digital rights management that, so it works fine on your Linux machine. The Flash, uh, I think that, that Facebook also uses Flash for its, its videos, and uh, no digital rights management that, and again, Linux works fine with it. But with Hulu.com, and I'm sure there are probably a lot of other sites out there as well that also have the Flash with the digital rights management, they do not work with Linux machines. So, guess what? Once we get rid of Flash, these site operators, people like the owners of Hulu.com, will be forced to switch to these newer technologies, HTML5, WebGL, whatever else, which will be compatible with Linux. 
because HTML5, I don't know about WebGL. I, I, I don't know anything about that, but HTML5, I know a little bit about. It's really basically just an extension of the JavaScript language. And so with HTML5, no plugin required, any HTML5 enabled browser, which is going to be pretty much every new browser on the market, will be able to play all the videos that are encoded for HTML5. So this is going to open up a lot of new websites then to Linux users that they were not able to use before, well, which they're not able to, to uh, uh, use now with Linux. So it's, it's really, really great news. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, and there is another group of people a little bit upset about the death of Flash, and uh, those are like, I guess we could call them the historians. And uh, there was a news article I saw, which unfortunately I didn't see it till after I put the slideshow together, but they're calling for Adobe to release the Flash code as open source because they want to be able to use it to go back and still play their old Flash games and to play uh, uh, the old websites, look at the old websites that were Flash enabled from before. But, you know, I don't know, as a practical matter for most people, I don't think it's going to matter all that much. But I think overall, killing off Flash, great thing, especially great for Linux users. And, yeah, what else can I say? Anyway, I think that's pretty much it. That pretty much covers it. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And we will see you next time.